Puju, Wago Shindagu, Migazi and Dodem, Gazaga Squadji Me Kagindunjiba. Today I'd like to share a little bit about the story of how Red Lake got its name. In northwestern Minnesota, Upper and Lower Red Lake are two lakes that are converged and, and connecting to one another. There are numerous smaller rivers that drain into Red Lake and uh, surrounding Upper and Lower Red Lake are a patchwork of swamps that are all interconnected. There's so many tamarack trees there that there's a slight pinkish tinge to some of these streams as they pour into Red Lake. And ultimately the Dakota, uh, as well as the Ojibwe and the French, all called Red Lake, Red Lake initially because of these tannins that colored the water in places. However, around 1760, there was a major historical event that gave new meaning to the name Red Lake. The Ojibwe had been on the move over a period of many hundreds of years, moving from our original homelands on the east coast of what's now the United States and Canada through the Great Lakes and converging in the Minnesota Lake Country. Around 1760, the Ojibwe arrived in what's now Red Lake. There were numerous villages, Dakota villages, around Red Lake. And on the south shore of Lower Red Lake, Today, there are Ojibwe villages there that we call Little Rock and Red Lake and Red Bee and so forth. And on the point of land <clears throat> in between Upper and Lower Red Lake, there is a community today that we call Panema. When the Ojibwe first arrived there, the Ojibwe and Dakota had been in conflict with one another. And as the Ojibwe drove the Dakota further west, uh, they first established a village at present day Panema. And it was a strange experience because for that first year, there were Dakota villages on the south shore of Red Lake. And you could see just a matter of miles away on the other side of the lake, the fires from the Ojibwe village in Panema. There was a Ojibwe woman named Fanny Johns, whose Ojibwe name was Ogimakwe who told oral histories about the first Ojibwe arrival in Panema and said that <clears throat> there were spiritual leaders there who would burn medicines in the fire anytime that Dakota scouts came to see how many Ojibwe people were in the new village. And between <clears throat> the medicines and the smudging and whatever these spiritual leaders were doing, it created a mirage that there were thousands and thousands and thousands of Ojibwe there. Many of the Dakota living on the south shore of Red Lake decided it wasn't worth risking their lives and packed up their families and moved west towards Sisseton. But many others stayed. And in the springtime, the inevitable conflict took place. <clears throat> According to legend, there were two Ojibwe trappers kind of south on the shoreline uh, at present day Battle River. <clears throat> and as they were trapping and going about their business, a huge Dakota war party descended on them. When they did, they killed one of the trappers and the other one escaped running through the woods and came to Panema to sound the alarm. Ojibwe warriors rose up and went running along the shoreline, others hopping into canoes and paddling along the shoreline <clears throat> and there was a huge battle. Most Ojibwe battles, uh, Ojibwe Dakota battles were over in a matter of minutes. And this one took hours and hours as more and more Ojibwe people descended on the battlefield. This was a battle that was conducted up close and personal. War clubs, knives, hand-to-hand -hand combat. And eventually the Ojibwe overwhelmed the Dakota and the surviving Dakota hopped into canoes <clears throat> to flee from Battle River and, it, and were engaged in a running battle um, in canoes with the Ojibwe hot in pursuit. One of the big advantages that the Ojibwe had in Ojibwe Dakota warfare were their birch bark canoes, which were lighter and more buoyant than the Dakota dugout canoes, which were made from hollowed out tree trunks. As the Ojibwe overtook 
the Dakota in the naval part of the battle, they capsized boats, clubbed people in the water, and eventually caught up with the remainder of the Dakota party all the way at the Sandy Outlet, which is on the far side of Lower Red Lake, and they annihilated the remains of the Dakota War Party. Returning back to Battle River at the original point of origin for the battle and where most of the carnage had taken place, there were so many Ojibwe and Dakota warriors who had died that their blood, their life fluids ran together and flowed out into the lake in a bright red plume. And the Ojibwe said, that's why we call it Red Lake. To this day, in Ojibwe, the word for Battle River is Gatanapinaniding, which means the place of slaughter. And the name for Red Lake is not Miskozagaigun, which would literally mean Red Lake. It's actually Miskwagami Wizagaigun. It's the lake with the red body of water. All that built into a name. It's a terrible and hard story, but it's an important part of our understanding of how the Ojibwe took control of Red Lake and the deeper meaning behind the name. There's a lot in the water at Red Lake. Miigwech. Thanks for watching today. I'm Anton Troyer. Let's keep in touch. I'm active on social media and my website has lots of information on my books, speaking engagements, free Ojibwe language resources, resources for teachers, and more. Miigwech.